than the built-in graphics cards. So, gra so the motherboard would be like, you know, you don't need the inbuilt one. So we're just going to disable that for you. Don't worry about it. So what you need to do then to be able to utilize this to make sure that you can stream and play completely live for you is to need to go into players. And uh, we're going to try and do that without messing anything up. I'm really good at that. So we're doing it slow. There we go. We need to remember which key. It was delete. I think we can restart anyways, right, Simon? Or will we break anything? Okay, great. We won't break anything, confirm. Otherwise, we blame Simon. So that's why he's here. I can, <laughs> I can break everything, it's fine. There we go. See a tiny, tiny thing down in the lower left corner saying entering setup. So hopefully, we get it correct. There we go. Look at how fancy this BIOS is, though. Back in my day, it was all blue and white. You only could use the arrow keys. Now we can use the miles and everything. So, so then what you want to do is go into settings. And you want to go into advanced because you're really good at computers. So it's fine to go into the advanced settings. You, you've come that far. And what you do after that is go into the integrated graphics configuration. As I mentioned, most motherboards will disable the, integra like the integrated graphics. As uh, so you go there, and on most motherboards, if I remember correctly, it will always be called like something with like IGD multi monitor. So even if like no matter what brand of motherboard you will be using, you can you can look for this. So IGD multi monitor is what you want to be looking for in your fancy bias that they now have. So you just go ahead and click that, and you go make sure that it's enabled. Of course, that's what you want to do. And then uh, we go to F10 and find yeah. correct. And uh, yes, we want to have it enabled. That is uh, perfectly fine. So then it will save and hopefully bring us, you know, to the actual computer where we can't break any more things, right? Yeah, yeah. We also have a bunch of spaceships landing right now next to us, actually. So if you're a DreamHack, uh, you should definitely be here so you can, you know, stand here and watch the spaceship land with us. It's quite intense. So now we're just uh, rebooting everything and uh, making sure that everything is okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, there we go. We have a mouse. Putting in the pin. Super secret. We have programs. We haven't broken anything yet. So what you do is, of course, go back into settings. We see Steam updating, of course. What what else would Steam be doing? And we go back to encoding. And suddenly we got QuickSync. Check this out. So you choose that, of course. And uh, then we can apply that. So. If you press OK, the settings will minimize, so it's easier to just press Apply so you can keep on fidgeting with all your settings. That will take about five hours to get perfect, because everyone is really picky, so that's fine. And we can actually go down to Quick Sync Encoder, and we can do custom parameters. So what can we exactly control in all of these custom custom parameters for us that are you know, not so tech-savvy? 
yeah, so you can control uh, the sort of quality and bit rate that you want to encode, and also uh, the priority of the sort of um, uh, codec that you want to use, or the right. me encoding method. So if I press this right here. So then we've got break control method, so you can right. see there's like a... Uh, so what would you there. say be the most optimal for someone that wants to just get going? Uh, probably CBR, because you want yeah. a constant bit rate. If you've got uh, a reasonable internet connection, yeah. a variable ri bit rate, which is CBR, is, uh, you know, can vary. Uh, yeah. It can be quite peaky, so, uh, so CBR is probably good. Yeah. So if you've got dodgy internet, do, do not use VBR. That's what we learned. And then, of course, you can set up the, the bit rate and stuff yeah, like exactly. that. And that's basically how much everything buffers and how much everything processes. So you don't need to worry too much about that. Yeah, I can tell you that the Twitch, for example, is using 3.5k as a maximum bit rate. So if you got really good internet, 3.5k is you know what you can use, and that will be as much as you can use as well. So that will be fine. That's there we go. So basically now, if we start a, a game, which we obviously have prepared because we're really good at this, uh, and we can do a preview, so we have everything set up there, we're just going to start the game, and it will be completely uh, flawless and effortless and everything, and we prepared this completely flawless, so as you see, we barely need to log on or use the authenticator at all, so... We, we've practiced this many times to make it as, as fluent as possible. So the game we're going to try it out with is actually um, it's actually Overwatch, if you've seen that. It's the new game from Blizzard that is uh, quite intense, at least my computer lags a bit when I'm using this. I have to downscale a lot when I'm streaming. But when you're using Quicksand, you actually don't have to because it's not gonna, it's not going to affect the gameplay. I don't think I can play too well, though. When oh, it's okay. Well, it doesn't fix that, I'm afraid. No, sadly, <laughs> Quixing doesn't fix your terrible game skills, as I've learned. So, we'll see how we're going to do. We're just going to set it up in OBS, so we can see the game in OBS as well. Super easy as almost. Just go for game capture. Always name your layers, folks. Always name your layers. We name it. There we go. So now we can see the game in there. So the preview is using as much uh, resources as a normal stream would. So when you're popping up preview, you can check the game before actually starting broadcasting. And you can actually see how much the game graphics will lag before starting the stream. So you won't have any nasty surprises if you do that. So we'll just see where you find the mouse again. Here we go. Yes, we shall allow this. Otherwise, it will be hard to start the game. There we go. Internet fix. Game started. Oh no. That's okay. Oh, I thought it was something right there. But it's okay, everyone. It's no problem. It's fixed. We didn't break anything. Simon can confirm. And you know what to do otherwise. Just blame Simon. So we're going to try and just jump into a game and just try it out a bit. And we're obviously going to get all the kills because the camera is totally not in. So this will be perfect. So we can, we can choose these heroes right here. So we're, we're going to choose the most skill-based one, which is Bastion, which is, you know, a hero which you can just sit down in a corner and get play the game by sitting and camping. So as you can see, it's, it's running super smooth. For us, obviously, it's not the same as uh, being... Uh, uh, as being on uh, on a proper proper PC, since uh, we're having a virtual stream right now, so it's a little bit tricky to, to play it out. But as you can see, the game itself is running smoothly. And this is even being virtual, so on your own PC, it's going to be even smoother. Trust me. If you don't trust me, you can actually come down to stream area and check it out. I will be streaming using these exact settings that I've been showing you on the exact same computer that we're using right here, actually. So you can just come down and, and check it out for yourself and. Uh, and see me fail multiple times. So that's gonna be great. Yeah, I mean, I think I should just let you play, honestly, and I can just talk. Okay. How about that? Yeah, I, I could just... So, no, now we see someone who's actually good at the game, uh, right there, um, yeah, perfect play. Neither of us too. <laughs> neither of us are, are very professional at this. But as you can see, the game flows very, very smoothly. It's super easy to set up. The only bit tricky part that people find intimidating is going into the bias. 
but is really not as tricky as it seems. You just need to remember that you're looking for the integrated graphics and you're looking for the IGD. Yeah. IGD multi monitor setting. So when you know that, just write down in a little note and you go in there and you just enable it and there you go. You can use QuickSync as long as you have an Intel processor. Yeah. It works so does it work with every Intel processor? So it only works with those that have graphics. So that would be the ones um, typically ending with K. Okay. Uh, apart from the ones <laughs> There's always an exception, isn't there? Of course. Uh, apart from the ones which are 59 families, so the 5930K does not have it. Okay. Um, so, but, but the, uh, even the 4800 family, so uh, 47, uh, that has it as well as, um, you know, obviously the sixth generation four family. So anything with so Core i7 6 something something would have it. So, literally any processor that's in the sixth series will yeah, have it. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. If you if you were in doubt, you can get the sixth generation processor, and you will know for sure that no matter which processor you will use, it will be able to use QuickSync. So I mean, that means you can probably get a pretty affordable PC to stream from, and still be able to use QuickSync, which is a, a massive help if you're playing, you know, CPU intensive games. If you're a CS:GO player, this will be super helpful for you because, as you know, CS:GO uses a lot of CPU power. And uh, being able to take some load off of the off of the system and make sure that, that it just runs smoothly, it helps so much. You can get all those sick headshots that you've been missing because of lags, obviously. So this will work way, way better. But we also have another cool thing to talk about. Not only do we have quick sync, but we're having a camera right now that we've done scale a little bit to make everything run a little bit smoother while we do this. But it's actually called um, the Real Sense, a 3D camera. Yeah. And what this means, like a 3D camera sounds kind of freaky, but what it does is actually scans you. It's got, is it IR? Yeah, it, it actually has a laser projector. So if you, uh, unfortunately they can't probably hear me on the stream, but uh, maybe you need to repeat what I'm saying. Ah, there right. go. By stream. Um, so here we have a, a laser projector, which is a tiny little projector, which actually draws a grid. Um, and this piece here is um, an infrared camera that can see distortion of the grid. And by calculating the distortion, the camera can work out, the electronics in the camera can work out what sort of object that is. And then in the middle we have an optical webcam, which is a piece you're actually watching us on now. And it's a 1080p webcam. The whole thing's a USB 3 camera, so it's got a lot of bandwidth uh, compared to USB 2, for instance. And also, of course, it's plug and play. So you don't need to do much. You just need to, you know, if you want to use some of the fancier uh, fancier settings, you can use this, which is really, really cool, by the way. You know, if you've been watching my stream before, you know that back home I actually have a green screen which obviously takes up a lot of space. Um, in these cameras, they have a built-in green screen. Yeah, which it, like, it's it's crazy because what it does, it, it scans where you are and it will just cut out the background. So it will feel where your face is and where your body is and just virtually create a green screen, which if you live in a tiny place that I do, that is so helpful. You don't need to invest in all of these different kind of setups and the lightings and all the stuff. Like obviously having a lamp is still good because so the camera can see you, you know. But uh, other than that, as long as you're not in pitch black darkness and you have this camera and you've got the extra drivers to make sure that you can use the green screen, then you're good to go without having to buy any of the big mounts and the giant green screen. So I think they're not even that cheap. I mean, you can get a few cheap ones, but it's going to take a lot of money and space, and that's unnecessary. We can have everything virtually made. Honestly, this is amazing. I've been trying it out over there, and it blew, it blew my mind because it works so well. Another thing that's really cool is you can actually integrate this since it scans your facial expressions. It can even read your pulse. One thing they've done with this is create a horror game that the scarier you, like the more scared you get, the harder the game becomes. You've seen me play Outlast. You can imagine how that would go if I would have a real sense camera. I doubt I would get as far as I did. I didn't even get halfway through the game. I would probably not even get past the first creepy crazies that we encountered. So if you're into horror games, this is going to have vast possibilities in especially that genre but in other genres too when it comes to interaction and all this stuff there's a lot of stuff being produced for these kind of things so i'm excited i think i'm gonna get to play with this in my streaming area as well so you can actually see me 
uh, try and make everything work and it showcase it a little bit more because we have, as always, it is it is technology and streams and, and esports, so we clump it all together. But we have had some technical issues. I'm not sure. You think we can try and make it work again? Yeah, let's give it a see, go. We're gonna give it a go right, and see. So we're gonna we're gonna plug this in in the back. So I'm gonna take this and you're gonna see my lovely arms really really up close. Wonderful. And we're gonna just plug it in like so. There we go, maybe. You know how it is with USB ports? You always need to try at least three times before it actually connects. There we go, it's plugged in, so we're gonna see if we can make it work. So we're gonna go out of this game. There we go, the classic Alt F4 always works. It's uh, trusted and, and true, hopefully. I mean, it's, it's pitch black, hopefully. Simon says it's fine, so I'm, I'm trusting Simon. See, we can always trust Simon. Then we're gonna see. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave this to him because I've I've not been behind the scenes so much. I don't actually know as much about setting it up yet. That's why I'm gonna get to try it myself in a bit as well. But I've been I'm trying. If you come to the Intel booth, the DreamHack, we're in the D hall right now, like right next to the big stage, and uh, and you can come up to the upstairs section. It's actually two levels. Not only will you see us, fabulous people, but you will also be able to try it out in the computers that's here, and they actually have horror games that it's um, compatible with and you can also try out all the different other games with it as well so it's really cool and I'm sure a lot of you have seen the the face rig uh, which is also I, I know a few streamers have used face rig to be like the doge uh, in the corners instead of having your actual face on stream so you can actually come here and try it out because since it scans all your facial expressions and all that stuff really really accurately um, you can become a doge yourself which is, you know, everyone's lifelong dream, really. <laughs> Myself, I, I always wanted to be. You can also be a hamburger, oh, yeah, which is yeah. my second yeah. high favorite yeah. dream. Yeah. So, great. yeah, it's it's amazing. You can also be. I think it's a it's a plant person <laughs> thing, which is, you know, high up there on the list as well of potential things to be. So now we're just trying to set everything up as always. Uh, the classical DreamHack music is playing on a volume that is making your ears bleed. So if you have trouble hearing us. We do apologize, but we're trying our best to, to speak. So, how fun is it to install drivers? Sorry? How fun is it to install yeah, drivers? Yeah, it's great fun. Yeah, I do it every day. You do it every day, actually. Yeah, I do actually do it so, every so it's day, kind of yeah. like your hobby and, and yeah. your work. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so when did you yeah. start uh, installing drivers? Was it oh, like uh, uh, least, as a kid? Uh, like 20 years ago. 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah. And you just found your passion. It's yeah, like installing exactly, drivers exactly. is what I want to yeah, do. Yeah. That's my... Oh. That's right. So uh, if you want to know how to become a professional driver installer, you can also come by the Intel booth and, and talk to Simon. He's very approachable, very friendly guy, and he will tell you all about how to become a professional driver installer. Okay, look, the most exciting bit of installing a driver is watching it almost end. Like yeah, 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 see. So we're almost there, guys. It's 34 out of Stop. At the end, so you get a little bit of excitement there. You go, oh, here you comes. A little bit of hype. You know how to build hype? Drivers building high. You see there? That's what that's it did eight. right there. That's now gone to 36. Oh, see, and now so, it goes back to 35 again. So uh, it's a little bit of mind games. <laughs> gotta gotta pay attention to the drivers so they don't trick you because uh, they can and it might end badly. But hopefully we will be able to to showcase this. As I mentioned, we've had to reboot a little bit and retry things and connect things to different computers and all that stuff, but hopefully it's, it's gonna work out. I don't even know if I have my chat open. Let's see if, if we have anyone that's asking us any questions, because maybe we could answer them, hopefully. I mean, I probably can't, but that's why Simon is here, because he's the professional. I'm, I'm just, what I do for a living is, is make weird faces into a camera and talk a lot of nonsense for very long periods of time. Let's have a look. I don't know how this works. Do you know how this works? You know, I'm supposed to do this for a living, you know, yeah, and uh, no and uh, it's it's a lie. People say it's really easy to open a Twitch chat. I don't know what they're talking about, honestly. I really don't understand. Oh, apparently we're playing StarCraft, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're, pl we're playing StarCraft right now. This is the obviously the new expansion that came out. So, oh. They just called my name on stage, guys. I guess I need to go and accept my prize for apparently I've been in cosplay. Uh, beautiful name, Emily. Really. So in case you're wondering why they're shouting Emily, it's obviously. 
is if you're... No, but there's a lot of cool stuff going on all around here, and uh, there's been, like, tons going on on the stage, which you obviously can see perfectly fine up here. Another cool bit of, you know, bit of tech that... Uh, like the surround camera, what do you call it? Yeah, the 360 camera. 360 camera, can you believe that? You can take a photo and you can do, you know all those cool videos that's been coming up online? This is the camera that can make them, where you can like look around inside the video and by clicking inside while the video is running, it's really freaky that you can do that. Because normally when you click, you know, on the video, it right? And that's kind of weird when it doesn't. So you can actually come up here and take your selfies and be able to see all around yourself, which which is insane because normally you don't have that much of a person. You see it's Oh, look at that. Oh, look at the magic. I, I'm not even in the shot. You can see the further away it goes. So the cameras, if we get closer right now, hopefully it can see me too. It hates me. It hates me. But if Simon does it, see he gets there. So the camera is, is clearly biased. But um, what happens is it has about 60 centimeters range, I think, to be accurate. Up to a meter. Up to yeah. a meter, all right. So obviously most of you won't be sitting a meter away from your computer screens. That'll be kind of kind of awkward to, to be that far away. But what it does is if you go closer, you can see how he emerges. Oh, you can see my hand a little bit. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. I'm in the I'm in the thing. Yes. <laughs> no. So what happens is, as you see, his background is automatically cropped out, which is quite cool because again, you save so much space. So much time and so much money on massive setups with anymore, clearly. And you can also pretend to be a ghost. Look at him fading in and out. You can be so. This is also another factor of the it'll work amazingly. No, but a horror streamer, exactly. So you can just surprise your viewers by and then just fully disappears. You they will never know when to expect you. How cool is that, though? I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna become a professional ghost streamer. I think. What would be the category for that? I don't know. Somebody right, Twitch, help me out. What category would that be? Ghost? Is it game called ghost? I don't know. I think that's cool. Do we have any other cool things? Oh yeah, that thing. The tank sandbox. I got to try it yesterday. So another thing. I think they're using. The, are they using real sense too? Okay, so perfect. We're on track here. <laughs> they have a tank in, in here, which is basically just a giant sandbox, which you used to play in as a kid. There's no there's no shovels and stuff, though. Sorry, so you can't make, you know, the, the cakes and the stars and, and all that. But what you can do is you, you dig around in it and you create hills and rivers or, you know, whatever you want to create. And it will take a picture with the RealSense camera and create a topographical accurate map. What you do after that is you get a little bit and hopefully beat them, obviously, because you're the better tank driver. And you can actually use different topographical advantages, so being, you know, high ground or low ground, to avoid your friend's missiles or, you know, kill them faster. That's pretty cool. I was really bad at it. I lost immediately. But I tried really hard. But it was really fun, too, because, again, you can just change the map and create advantages or disadvantages however you please, if you if you have the strategical mind to be good with maps, which I clearly wasn't. That was disappointing. I'll give it another go. I'll give it another. If you want to challenge me, let me know on Twitter, and we'll come have a tank round, and I'll probably lose again, but, you know, we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. I'm going to try and beat you really badly. So, yeah. What else do we have, Simon? Do you have anything else interesting we can talk about and tell people about? Yeah, we have uh, the 5v5 downstairs. So, oh, yeah, uh, right. Yeah. So, that is that CS? Uh, yeah, yes. Yes. So we have there's a setup here in the Intel booth, of course. So if you're a dream hack, like all the awesome people are, then you can just come to the D hall to the Intel booth, and in the downstairs section, there is a five v five challenge in CS:GO. What teams are playing? Who are they being able to challenge? Team Putting on the spot here. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Team Property was it yesterday or was uh, it today? Team Dignitas. Was team Dignitas. All right. Are there time slots where people can find this or? LGB as well. LGB as well. All right. So we've got a lot of good teams coming here that you can actually challenge. Do they win anything, or is it like glory to actually beat their idols, or? That's another good question. Another good question. Anything, so, oh, um, that's the problem. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, yeah. So we need to figure out a price <laughs> if someone ever wins, because apparently they've been quite good. Who would have thought professional players in a game that they're professional in being good at the game? Unheard of. 
I don't know how that came around. But anyways, it's a lot of fun. You can challenge and play against your idols, like in, in those esports, and ask them all kinds of questions they want to know about esports. Take your chance right now and just ask them anything, because all of them are super friendly. About play against. I, I'm not sure if I dare play CS against these beasts. They're they're incredibly good at it, and I'm I'm incredibly not, as you saw previously. My Overwatch adventures right there. Very disappointing. But yeah, so that's really. There's a lot of stuff going on. Was we can try out hands on. So definitely go do it. I think we have like an Oculus Rift. We do have Oculus. We have four. They got four uh, yeah. Oculus Rift. They were in contact with one. I I don't even have a half of an Oculus Rift. So I'll just play with all the all the cool technological toys that is scattered about here. So definitely, if you hang out with some really cool people and obviously myself and uh, and try out all these cool things. So yeah. What's that? Formula, we got Formula One card. Huh? Really? So apparently you can drive a car too. Wow, yeah, yeah. Is there anything we can't do here? No, nothing. There's nothing there's nothing doing. we can't do that would be worth doing that you. Can't. It's basically like Wonderland. Oh, yeah. Into nice ring to it. Make it trending on Twitter, guys. Hashtag Intel Wonderland. Do so we have anything else to talk about? Do you think that you know all the people in? Will be very angry with. We've covered most things. We covered most things. I mean, so, uh, if there's anything else worth covering, then. Yeah, the comments. The comments. Can log in to... Or Twitch. Oh, here we go. Wait, I had it for one second. If you have any questions, guys, make sure to ask them right now because I actually have Twitch chat finally working. It's connecting in Swedish. So it, it's almost there. Oh, look, you have that one. So if you go live. Oh, I can see I can see myself too. Oh, Jesus. We don't want that. We don't want double me. That's. So. Here we go. So apparently we're in StarCraft. Um, that's interesting. Maybe I should have thought about that before. Maybe we should have had an accurate uh, uh, title. I had to bribe the Twitch people to not ban my channel after this. So inaccurate with uh, with my with my content right now. But it seems like I mean it takes a while for the chat to actually load as well. But it seems like we got the message. To I think that they are very they're very confused about what we've been talking about. Apparently not. Obviously not. No, literally nobody is watching. It even says we're offline. But we aren't, because we can see ourselves. It is a little bit weird. Right? This is a 38 view. I mean, on, on mine it says 52. Oh, okay. So, I mean, there is some kind of technical glitch somewhere, we cannot be sure. But, uh, I feel pretty, I feel pretty content with this. There we go. Oh my goodness. Of course, Kyrie, of course. So now you're actually, uh, you know, on on screen in the Intel booth. So you better behave, otherwise they will, they will be very angry with me. So otherwise, you know, keep 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 the capas to minimum. We made it work perfectly. What are you talking about, Slater? Come on, we, this was pretty smooth. This was pretty smooth. I mean, I thought it was pretty smooth, no, but like, there, there's not a proper stream if it's not a little bit cringy and a little bit awkward. That's not a real stream. <laughs> 44k viewers, of course, of course, of course. I see you got the math down. We will avoid doing math on stream because we all know how that ends. It's not. It's about. It ends about as good as my my tank driving and my Overwatch playing. So we shall not do that. Oh, Sperks, hello, dude. Welcome to the to the Intel booth virtually. It's much cooler in real life, guys. Just really check it out. Come on. Why, why are you sitting in, in online when you can be here in person? That's a good question. Yeah. FPS is better? Great. I, I, I don't know how many FPS we were at before. Since we haven't dropped any frames, then we're at 60 FPS. So, I mean, for us, 
according to, to, to our very reliable sources, it does say 60 FPS and, and zero drop frames. Uh, at, at 1080p. At 1080p. Thank you, QuickSync. Thank you for making this possible for us. Oh, look, we have, a, we have the secondary screen back as well. This is, this is so smooth. I mean, it's, it's almost like I would be a professional at this. Almost, kind of, you know. I mean, I, I'm impersonating a professional. But yeah. And obviously, being in the StarCraft uh, channel when there's a massive StarCraft tournament going on here on Dreamhack, probably not the best idea we ever had. How did we figure that? <laughs> Anyways, guys, I think that was it. I think we covered everything. If you have any questions regarding this, if you're curious to try all these things we talked about out for yourselves, don't hesitate to either write me or the Intel guys or come by the booth and talk to them directly. They're all super friendly, super helpful. And you can try everything hands-on. Like, I'm literally staring at all the things right now. And it's amazing. And you should all come here and try it out because it is a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, come hang out. Be social. Kind of. You know. A little bit. Sometimes. Do you have anything to add, Simon, before we say goodbye to our lovely viewers? Well, thanks for watching. Yay, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you had an amazing, informative experience. And I'll see you back here tomorrow where we'll be building a computer. So we're hopefully not going to fuck that up either. And it's probably going to be just this smooth. So I'll see you then, guys.